Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick overview on how to play Dungeons and Dragons, Bedlam, and Neverwinter. Uh, there will definitely be some spoilers. I'll try to keep it light, but be warned. Uh, that being said, it is an escape and solve mystery game. And um, does involve puzzles which only have a singular solution. And once you play through it, as I have done completely, uh, you will know the solution each time. Uh, there is a little bit of randomness as far as loot is concerned, and of course what can happen in combat is uh, a little bit up in the air, but essentially it's quite linear in that regards. Um, that being said, it is still quite fun to play. I found it enjoyable to play with my daughter, who is nine, and we had a blast reading out the story, uh, more drama, but there's some uh, comedy in within, some humorous uh, events that occur, and it's quite enjoyable for an evening or two. That being said, let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is set up a player board, and this is the first board of Act 1, Board A. But before you even get to that, you got to pick your character. So we have multiple race cards. And with each race, they have an a, a innate ability. So Dragonborn here with Strength, Gnome with Intelligence, Human with Wisdom, Elf with Dexterity, Dwarf with Constitution, Tiefling with Charisma. Now these abilities will come and play with uh, certain attacks and saving throws you need to do. So let's just pick Dragonborn here. The next thing you need to do is pick your class. There's a bunch of class cards. We'll flip them over. And each class does have an additional secondary attribute that you will see. And then this also has the final hit points the character will have. So you can see the bard here has a secondary attribute of charisma with a hit point of nine. We've got sorcerer with charisma, lower hit points. Paladin with strength, higher hit points. Barbarian with constitution. Monk, constitution. Rogue, dexterity. Fighter with strength. Wizard with intelligence. Druid with wisdom. Ranger with dexterity. Warlock with intelligence. Cleric with wisdom. So quite a number of different characters you can pick. So let's just go with Bard here. And the classes are not meaningless. With each class comes a class card. And you have multiple skills associated with card. You have a level one that is your starting level. And as you progress to act two, you automatically level up to level two. Act three, you, act, you have access to level three spells. Um, that have been said, there's also a natural ability. Whenever you roll natural 20, you can heal any one player or do additional damage. So that's quite nice. So you take your associated class card. So we got Bard. So we want to get the Bard card. And you slip it underneath for Act 1. So just Level 1 skill set is showing here. Raise this up a little bit so you can see. All right. And then the next thing you have to do is pick your starting weapon. So there are multiple starting weapons. In this game, it doesn't restrict you to what you pick. You go for the, say, generic loot to fit with the bard. But yeah, maybe we'll pick a dagger of swiftness. And it has a critical number here. If you roll a 20, uh, I'm sorry, a 20 sided dice, 17 or higher, you activate its bonus attribute. For here, it's an additional one point of damage. So you place your, uh, you get your associated miniature here, and you get your friend's miniature if you're playing with another player. And I have to admit, uh, you probably are better to run this game with four players. Uh, act 1 is more puzzle heavy, as is puzzle uh, level 2, I suppose, Act 2. 
Act Three is really combat heavy, and uh, I it is possible to complete with two players. Um, and is there is a um, if you do die, there is a, a bit of a cheat where you get a blessing and get resurrected. But for the most part, it would be a lot easier to run through with four players for sure. That being said, you take your associated miniature, place on the board. The first player, you can pick randomly to go. And there's no grids or hexes here. You just pick a spot where you want to head off first. And in this story, you're trying to investigate why people are missing from a town. And you head to the local tavern to find out. So where better to start than maybe at the bar, right? So you go over here, you go to the deck of cards and select card number two. So pick the two, card two, I'm sorry, and you read it. The tavern is dark and shabby, but warm enough. The smell of ale hangs in the air. You approach the Goliath barkeep, nod to the elven man staring blankly into the distance, and ask the barkeep about any strange sightings nearby. She shakes her head, confused. Everything is always fine here. How odd. You press the question again. Now you have to do a group check. You have to roll eight or higher, but if you have charisma, you get a bonus six-sided dice to the 20-sided die roll. So we are... Dragonborn with strength, but we do have charisma here with Bard. So we take our 20 sided dice and you got your six sided dice. You roll this one first, I suppose. And you got a five. Well, you got to be eight, so you do get your additional bonus skills. And that's a four, so it makes it nine. And you pass. Now, with the group check, check, half of the party needs to pass. So if you have four players, two players need to pass. If not, we fail. But since we pass here, we get to pick card nine and advance ahead. So we go through the deck, find card nine, flip it over, read it, and progress the story. Now, at certain times, uh, there will be combat in the game. Uh, there are multiple monsters throughout the game. Uh, a lot of it fit the trope of Dungeons and Dragons with gluttonous cubes and the display, displacer beast, just like in the movie. Uh, I have to admit, there's no beholder uh, yet or, or even a mimic, but uh, still a great deal of fun. Uh, so let me just show you very quickly. Here is a combat card. This is a skeleton. It does have an icon here, so it gets... One health for each player, so if we have two players that would get two health plus additional one, so it would be a three hit point monster. In this game, the monsters always attack first. Um, they You would roll the, a 20 sided dice for them. If you roll 12 or higher, then they hit you and you follow the instructions. You fight back, so with the Dragonborn, after roll eight or higher, you get a bonus if you have wisdom or dexterity against them. We do not, so I need to roll on the 20 sided dice. Roll, I got an eight, so I do a hit. Um, you automatically do one point of damage, but I don't get a bonus because I rolled under 17. And you have the other player go and so forth. So that's pretty much combat. In this game, you do have a loot you can find. There's a great number of different loot treasures here. Um, a lot of them give you additional damage or let you heal up or refresh skills. The skills that you have here, you can only use it once per act, but there are ways to refresh it, uh, mostly with the uh, artifacts that you find here. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I have to tell you with each puzzle. Uh, each solution is numerical in nature. Uh, therefore, that makes it, uh, if you have a number, say the solution is 110, you would find the card for 110 and flip it over and see if you've got the correct card. 
Uh, that being said, with this deck of cards, uh, for example, Act 1, it goes from 1 all the way down to 322. So if you have a numerical solution for your puzzle and you came out to, say, 512, then you know you're probably wrong because it's not even going that far. So let me show an example of a puzzle here. So with each puzzle card that you get, there is a number in the corner here telling how many cards. I'm just showing off this one because it's one of the simpler ones I think everyone will get. And here it says to cast, hold your hands apart, connect your fingers accordingly to the sparks on the diagram and your face, your palms away from you and complete the spell. So you're gonna connect your fingers thumb and pinky, ring finger and thumb here, face your palms away, cast a spell, and what do you got? Well, you see three fingers, two fingers, and one finger, right? So three, two, one. So you find card three, two, one in the deck. If you have the correct solution, it will see it on the top. Solve, shatter, read the story, progress. Um, that's pretty much it. It's once again, quite enjoyable. I never played a game like this. I'm assuming if you've had played mystery games and escape room games, then maybe this might be average for you. But since I've never played one, my daughter has never played one, we found it to be a blast. Uh, but once again, it's a single playthrough. Uh, those wondering, I am planning to keep this. So I can play it with my son later down the line. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, hopefully if you do pick it up, you find it enjoyable as well. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'll try and answer it as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.